Hey everybody, Quantum back here again with some more Master Duel content. I can't lie, I've been having some fun with Labyrinth. I've been learning the deck a little bit, and currently I'm 15 wins and 3 losses in the Duelist Cup. Not sure if I'll try to get to max level yet, uh, still very busy, but uh, I just want to go over my Labyrinth profile. It's a little bit of a budget version. I don't have the deck fully kitted out necessarily, uh, but it does work very well. So we're going to get straight into it here. I am playing a couple of bricks in like the Driver, because I'm playing the Double Gamma. Um, I'm playing some of the shufflers as well. These are all just discard fodder for the two furniture pieces, the chandelier and the Stovey Torby. Of course, we're still playing the triple maxi and the triple ash blossom and the triple imperm as our hand traps, as well as two Nibirus. There's a couple of cool interactions that I want to go over as well if you pay attention on the rest of this deck list here. We're only on one copy of Ku Clock simply because I, this card is, is good. You don't necessarily need to play it at three. You search it out when it's applicable. Um, you can play turn one one with this card if you end up searching it and you have like a big welcome in hand and an Ariana. There's a couple of interesting combo pieces that you would search this turn one or you know on follow-up if you like summon Ariana with like a welcome or big welcome uh, you're able to search this out and activate it trigger the trap that you are able to set off of Lady let's say and then there's like a lot of cool combos you can utilize. If it gets bestialed or banished or called by it or whatever it's not the end of the world you definitely don't need it to win it's kind of just a card that allows you a little bit more flexibility in terms of how you respond but in general labyrinth is in my opinion a deck that really relies on accumulating amount of uh, resources to win the game and so this card doesn't necessarily help you do that it's more of a defensive slash offensive option in order for you to deal with threats or react to threats right being able to play the trap card that you need in the moment if you set it with like lady or something like that um or you know you've activated a furniture to set a big welcome and activate it um but yeah, Ku Clock, a lot of application, but at one, I think it's the right uh, number to play. The reason why Gamma is in this list is simply because when you have nothing on board and you're activating a welcome or a big welcome, being able to stop the Ash Blossom is very relevant. Another key thing to consider that a lot of people forget, whether you play this in real life or Master Duel, if you have a Lovely on field, they can't respond to your trap cards with Ash Blossom, right? Because Lovely says your opponent cannot activate monster effects in response to the activation of your normal trap cards. So this card is an instant stop to Ash Blossom. But until you get the Lovely on the field, and hopefully it stays on field, you are going to be relying on other forms of playing around an Ash Blossom. So Gamma is one, obviously Transaction Rollback is another, we'll cover that in just a bit. Um, and this card, you know, it's not necessarily bad. If you're able to get it off during your turn, and you're not locked under Fiends from like Welcome Labyrinth, you probably should craft and make a um, Cyframe Gamma, but I didn't want to spend those Ultra Rare points just yet, so I already had... Oh my goodness, I cannot spell Gamma. I already had a Berserker. And this card is also nice because when a monster effect is activated, I can just straight up banish that monster. So it helps you deal with Snake Eyes a little bit in that matchup. Um, but, oh my goodness, is it not Gamma? Cyframe. I'll show you what card you probably should have if you don't have it already. This one right here. Uh, this will allow you to hand rip from your opponent, which is pretty relevant. Um, keeping them off of one resource is nice. Right, if you're able to gamma during your turn and then synchro with it. Another thing that's kind of under the radar is this is a light monster. And if you synchro this with like a lady or a lovely to make a chaos angel, you can now you now have both the effects of chaos angel, right? Because the um gamma is a light tuner, not that you need a tuner, but you know, monsters you control are not unaffected by monster effects activated by your opponent, and your monsters can't be destroyed by battle. So you get all of the um benefits uh, on the chaos angel because you're not really synchro summoning anything else for the light side which is why you don't necessarily need it in in labyrinth like the monsters cannot be destroyed by battle is relevant enough but it's just a cool little thing to have like kind of a pseudo towers monster on the board with the chaos angel um the two stovey no explanation needed there the two chandelier what i will say again if you watch my videos maybe i'll post more labyrinth gameplay if you're interested you always want to search these out and get these in rotations as fast as possible. So when you summon the Ariana, you know, you're searching for a furniture. When you're Welcome Labyrinth or Big Welcome Labyrinth, depending on the situation, you likely go for Lovely or Lady. Um, oh, sorry, um, uh, Lovely for the Bounce effect or Ariana. But then when you summon the Ariana off of the Welcome cards, you're searching for furniture to activate to reset more Welcome cards to get, you know, Lovely and stuff on field. So, like, it's very important to get the furniture in rotation. Um, they are how you build advantage. Um, they are how you constantly keep pressure on your opponent and just, you know, keep oppressing the board to win the game. 
Uh, the shufflers, you know, again, more bricks. So not necessarily a budget option, but like, you know, I already had them. So I was like, let me throw them in here because they are good discards with the Stoby Torby and the Chandelier. Uh, these have come up one match out of my 18 that I've played uh, to shuffle like Snake Eyes cards back into the deck. Otherwise, they just kind of been underwhelming. So I probably cut these if you can include, let's say, the Nadir package, which, you know, is unfortunately ultra rare. Um, you know, with the Ecclesia and the Dogmatica Punishment, which would require you to invest in Entis and stuff, more ultra rares for your extra deck, that is probably a better option. Um, but, you know, these cards, you can play them if you think that you'll have more application with them. I did use it in another match to dodge Abyssal banishing my Ku Clock as well. Um, so again, not super relevant because the Bishop can just be used the next turn on anything else that's dark in the graveyard, but it saved my Ku Klok. Um, but again, I don't think it really made a difference in the match, to be honest. Um, I still ended up winning that one. Um, but yeah, it's uh, a little underwhelming, a little less powerful than I thought it would be. Uh, one lovely still. Um, I don't think you necessarily need to play two. Obviously, everybody is on one. If it does get banished, it does suck, but you still have alternative ways to win the match. Uh, just with the trap cards, hopefully, you know, with, without lovely, your engine does suffer from like its recurability or its like recyclability. Um, so once you like run out of traps, you're kind of just out of gas if this card gets banished. Um, the nice thing though is like even if you're out of big welcomes, you do have other ways to access this card if it's already in your graveyard through the Muckraker, uh, which we can cover in a bit. But this card is actually more relevant than a lot of people I think realize in Labyrinth, or maybe you guys know, but I just found that it's very relevant. Only two copies of Nibiru. What's also cool is like you can trigger the Nibiru and then chain of furniture to discard the Nibiru and the opponent's board will still be wiped. The Nibiru won't be summoned. I think they still get a token though, but you know, you've been able to use the effect of Nibiru to wipe the field and then you've been able to actually discard it off the Stovi Torby or the Chandelier and get like the trap card that you want or you know, the Welcome la or the Labyrinth Labyrinth field spell. So kind of cool value there, kind of cool interaction if you didn't know that. Only two spells in the Prosperity and the Labyrinth Labyrinth. Um, prosperity, you know, it's just a consistency card. Why not? You don't necessarily need your extra deck as much as other decks in the format do. So if I can get a very key piece of my combo, unbrick my hand or something, if I do see this, it's very, very good. Uh, yeah, I'm opting to still play one Compulse, kind of questionable, um, but given that Link Monsters are kind of everywhere with the Snake Eyes decks, being able to bounce something back just you know throws off tempo a, a decent amount from the opponent. Um, it can also help to out a number of other big threats as well. Just having this card in rotation can be decent. Uh, Dimensional Barrier, I think you still have to play it. Again, it doesn't really do that much against Snake Eyes, but you know, it's st you still need it for coverage on other matchups. Uh, Triple Imperm, probably one of the most significant cards because you'll likely be setting this off Lady, you'll be drawing this, using it as a hand trap, uh, sometimes recycling it with the Lovely to just keep the opponent off of their effects. Very, very powerful. Um, Ice Dragon's Prison, I think you could make a case to play too. This card is even more powerful right now in the meta given that you know every deck is basically just a, a specific archetype. Super Heavy Samurai with being, I think, Machine, right? <laughs> uh, Snake Eyes being Pyros. Um, you know, Sword Soul, if you see them popping up in the meta because a lot of people are playing that deck since they could get it for free. Being Worms. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of type-specific things where this card can hit a lot. Um, so hard drawing this or setting it off Lady is also very relevant, again, depending on the matchup. That's what's so nice about this deck. First of all, it plays very well under Maxi, and I love decks that can play around Maxi. Because I was playing Sword Soul on an alt account, and like I got Maxi three times in a row with Sword Soul, and I didn't have an Ash or a Call By or a Cross Out in any of my hands, and I was like, yeah, like that's just variance, right? I mean, you just get hit by Maxi and you just lose the game because I have to pass my turn, and the opponent combos, and I don't have a Maxi, so it's like... Yeah, it's GG. Um, but this, you don't have to worry about it too much, right? It plays very well under Maxi. Um, usually they'll only get a draw one if they chain it in reaction to something. You don't play TTT, which is unfortunate. There's, I mean, I guess you could technically try to fit it in if you want, but I just don't think it gives you enough utility um, to play it. I mean, you do play Prosperity, and there's a case to say that people play Extravagance as well. So, I mean, TTT does offer you more versatility. And I guess if you wanted, you can like do this because if this card is dead, you can also discard it off the Labyrinth cards, um, the, the furniture. So m maybe it is better actually. <laughs> and I'm talking myself into it because yeah, I mean, given how underwhelming the uh, shufflers have been, maybe this is a better option. Um, moving on on the traps, only two copies of Welcome. I don't think you need to play three. This card is actually not that great. So just having one in rotation is really all you need. Um, having the second one just helps you increase the consistency that you see one of your Welcome cards in your opening hand. But one is really all you'll need. Uh, the big important card is Big Welcome Lab. You definitely need three of these. I think Labyrinth has its own pack now, doesn't it? 
It does. Uh, it's. I think it's you know a really strong deck in the format. It, it counters a lot of the meta. It does struggle against branded. I've only played one branded deck and I lost to it. It's one of my three losses. Actually, I've only lost twice because one of my losses was a disconnect. Um, we we entered the duel and it like disconnected, so it, like it shows zero turns. Um, I'm not sure what happened. I don't know if it was my connection or what, but. Uh, yeah, it's weird. But yeah, I did lose one legitimate match to Branded. Uh, they just overpowered the board and I just couldn't, and my traps weren't enough to deal with their stuff. Um, so it, it's going to be a tough matchup against Branded no matter what, I think. Um, the Ruma Cannon, you can also make a case to play this at two because again, in a Link heavy meta, this card just does a lot of work. Um, but also it just it's very decent to shut down an opponent's extension plays, right? Just flip everything face down. Do uh, you have any extension beyond that with all your monsters face down? Probably not. And pass turn back to me, flip my stuff face back, play face up again, and start popping off. Uh, big welcome again. The key card in the deck. Yeah, this is the like you. To be fair, like a lot of people shotgun this with like the banish effect. You always want to at least make sure you have one in your graveyard, in my opinion, to recycle with lovely. Uh, this is your key card, right? Th like this card facilitates so much. With lovely and with a Stovi Torby, like you can reset big welcome, Stovi Torby, uh, lovely, synchro into Chaos Angel, get back the lovely with the big welcome, link off the Chaos Angel into a Muckraker, bring back the Chaos Angel, because when this card is, um, if this card is special summoned, not once per turn, not if synchro summoned, if this card is special summoned, target one card on the field and banish it. So you can literally synchro summon this card, link it off, bring it back with Muckraker and banish another card. Like you banish on synchro summon, you banish on the special summon off of Muckraker and then you can keep putting this card in the graveyard and keep cycling it back. Um, it's absolutely insane. And then of course you can always like big welcome it back to the extra deck and like put it back on field so it has the effect of dark monsters uh, being used as synchro material. So you cannot, monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. Like it is, insane how much utility you have with this card and you should probably be playing three in your extra deck but i only have one and i don't want to craft the other two um and then transaction rollback i've only i've only crafted two i didn't even bother opening the pack um i think two is decent i don't know if you really want to play three this card you know you could set it and it has some application because everybody plays imperm right and in the mirror match like setting this card is cracked it's absolutely crazy um but Obviously, you really want to have this for the discard off of the Stovi Torby. And just having that extra effect of Big Welcome to activate again can really be pretty impactful. Like, unfortunately, you're not going to be triggering Lovely or anything twice. But, you know, being able to dodge effects with the Big Welcome is a big thing. And not having to banish your Big Welcome in order to, you know, or if you use the first effect to summon and bounce, you can't banish it anyways. But, like, yeah, the dodging effect with Transaction Rollback, being able to summon and bounce a card without having to banish your big welcome if you didn't use the normal effect of setting it and activating it that turn is pretty big as well. So that's a really overlooked um, utility option of transaction rollback, I think, where people are just looking at it and saying like, oh yeah, I can just like copy these good these good traps in my graveyard, which is true, that's good. But like copying the big welcome is a big thing you do. Obviously it also helps you play around Ash. If your big welcome got Ashed, you can transaction roll back again, so you still get your big welcome effect. It is a hefty cost at half your life points, but again, Labyrinth, the way that the reward sets up, it's usually either you're playing yourself into advantage and winning the game, or your opponent's going to OTK you anyways, right? That you're, like they've outed your resources, you have nothing to go off of, so you're likely just losing that game anyway. So the card is not necessarily a detriment, um, and it's worth playing two copies, in my opinion. For the extra deck, um, you don't necessarily need to play Garua. We're not playing Super Poly, which is a, it's, which is a good option to play. Um, if you, you know, are seeing like, again, branded heavy metas, etc. Um, and we're not playing Dogmatic Punishment. This is a good punishment target with the Bacephalus, let's say, um, because you send Bacephalus and then you can send Garua. Do I not have it here? No, I don't. I do, I have copies, but, um, maybe not favorited. This one here. Um, because you send this at 3,500, it takes out anything with the Dogmatic Punishment. Uh, I've already explained Draco Berserker as my <laughs> Synchro 8 option if I was playing Driver and Gamma on my turn. Uh, but again, Cyframe Lord Omega is probably better. Chaos Angel, you could probably play more. Baguska, you'll probably never go into. Uh, Dugaris is a flex option. I've done it for extra points at the end of the game. Swinging in for like a 7,000 Chaos Angel to get the uh, over 5k bonus at the end screen to get extra gems or packs or whatever. Um, Nightmare Cerberus, Nightmare Phoenix. Never summoned Cerberus once. I think I summoned Phoenix one time, but... They're fiends, so if you're locked under Welcome Labyrinth, you know, they are utility options in the extra deck. There are better ways to build this extra deck 
you know, to be fair, like you should be playing Underworld Goddess and stuff too, probably, but I didn't want to craft it. Um, IP Mascarena, pretty self-explanatory, a dark, pretty, pretty obvious. Three Muckraker. Uh, there's there have been matches where I summoned all three in a grind game and literally won the game because of it, because all of my big welcomes were in my graveyard and the guy kept outing my lovely. Um, and like I, ha I kept having to like early activate my big welcome so I couldn't like reset them with the lovely and so I kept summoning muckrakers to summon back the lovely so I could keep resetting this and then they would out it and yeah in the end I did end up finally out grinding them with the lovely uh, and the muckraker combination so yeah this card is really important for the deck I think um, it's only a super rare too which is nice um, so yeah if you don't have it you can definitely get it because I don't think it's in a pack I, I, I got this card right the, the month that I quit and then I came back five months later and it, yeah it hasn't been in a pack since I don't think um, again, just another budget option. I had this card from like a master pack on like a, you know, bundle that I opened. And so you're linking off a level eight monster. So you get the untarget ability and cannot be destroyed by battle uh, or sorry, uh, destroyed by card effects. It can be destroyed by battle. Uh, but then, you know, you put this on the field, you take out something, you make it 4,500, you know, your opponent, good luck outing it. Um, in the festival, the Synchro Link Festival, when I played against Snake Eyes, I had a video up uh, where I played against a, uh, a Snake Eyes match with Crusadia. And I put out an Avermax because I couldn't OTK them with the regular Crusadia combo. And the, they, they couldn't out the Crusadia Avermax. I made it with the IP Mascarena, I think. And it was untargetable, indestructible. They just had no answer for it. Um, and it just ended up winning me the game. Um, so I just put it in there because, you know, I might, you know, Muckraker or Dark or something bring back an IP from the opponent. and Or like, you can't bring it back. It has to be too far from the extra deck. So, yeah, you probably have some of your own IP, some of your own Dark, right, or something like that. And you, you can flood the board quite easily with Labyrinth and go into this. It's also a nice way to, like, well, same with Appaloosa. It's a nice way to, like, free up your board if your board is clogged up. Um, just go into a four-material Appaloosa or a three-material Appaloosa after you link summon and bring something back. Like, yeah, and having some of these utility options in Labyrinth is nice. I haven't made an Appaloosa yet. I've made BLS. Again, just kind of flexing just for fun, not not anything seriously to win me the game. I would have won the game anyways. Haven't made an Avermax or uh, an Appaloosa yet, but... Um, yeah, that's my Labyrinth deck. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you've enjoyed this video. It kind of made a change on the fly there. Maybe I'll test this out, see how it goes. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think if you made it this far in the video. And if you want to see more Labyrinth gameplay, thank you again for watching. Quantum is out.